needs praise be. Thank you very much. So I'm going to give you lines from that poem, from that prayer, and I want the crowd here to respond, praise be. So when I put my hands up, you go. Praise be. Brother Sun. Praise be. Sister Moon. Praise be. Sister Earth. Praise be. Brother Fire. Praise be. Sister Water. Praise be. So ten years ago, I came to my first Ignatian family teaching for justice, Fort Benning, Georgia. It was the first time I started hearing about environmental justice and what that means. Five years ago, I had swine flu. I was supposed to be in quarantine in my dorm room. I had a 102 degree fever. I was tired of sitting on my bed. So you know what? I went out. I went hiking. I had a 102 degree fever and I went hiking in 32 degree weather in February on the bluffs of the Missouri River. And I, as I stood there, a gorgeous red-tailed hawk flew right over my left-hand shoulder. And it was at that moment that I sensed the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit saying, I need you to be a Jesuit and I need you to take care of my earth, to take care of my world, to take care of my people. So five years ago is when I chose that this is what God wants of me, when I realized that. And so it's a vocation. My vocation is tied to environmental justice, to stewardship of our planet. And you know what? Your vocation is too, because you live here. Your vocation is to care for the place that you live, and to care for all those around you. Now, environmental justice takes on a lot of different meanings. One of the big ones is the tie between environmental justice and racial justice. Here in the United States, African Americans are 300% more likely to die of asthma because of the places they are forced to live near environmental degradation. So African Americans, according to the NIH, are 300% more likely to die because of asthma. It's also related to poverty. Those who are most affected by climate change, by environmental degradation, by fracking, by coal mining, by logging, they are the poor. They are the destitute. And it is our vocation, God's call to us, demanding us that we care for our brothers and sisters. That is what it means to be part of the community. So it is imperative for us to take action. So today when you talk to Congress, make sure to ask for funding for the Green Climate Fund. For comprehensive action at the Paris talks this summer. These talks to happen. And you know what? We can be successful because we've already been successful. You know who killed the Keystone XL pipeline? You all killed the Keystone XL pipeline. That was your action. You stood up to Congress. You stood up to the President and said, we cannot do this. It will destroy our environment. And so you were successful. Go and be successful today. We are capable. We must act now. We have the power, and we will be successful because you all have a vocation, and you are standing up for that vocation. Woo! Woo!